Hey guys, what's up? And welcome to another episode of Brew and Build. Today uh, we are back and uh, we are going to be doing some fun building. I have quite a cool build to be doing. Uh, I've been doing some work off camera. Last episode, what we created was this little market down here. And you can see some of the stuff I've worked on, but we can take a look at that in just a sec. Last episode, we created this market area. Thank you for all the nice comments and I am glad that you guys like the beds. Uh, that was something new that I tried and I thought it was pretty cool. And I'm glad to see that you guys liked it as well. Really love this area, really think it turned out great. The tree was great and it's been very inspiring. Very nice to have like this little area here. So what I've been working on today is setting up the foundations as I may do a time lapse, I may not, of this bottom portion here. It's uh, quite big, and that's what we're going to be working on today. Don't know if we're going to get it all done, but going to try and get a good amount done. I got a good plan for this, um, but what this is going to be is a mixture of two different builds. So this is our some of our first. This is like our first house. This is going to be a shop of some sort. I think it's going to be the blacksmith, and uh, so we've got... This is going to be the blacksmith house, and then this is going to be an inn. And so it's quite big here. It stretches all the way here, goes down into this area here. There's going to be like outside seating here. And then it also is mirrored on this side as well. So it is similar shaped. Um, and I think it's going to be called the Crescent Moon Inn because of its shape. Now, right here, there is going to be a connection between the blacksmith and the inn. I'm not really sure why. I may have like kind of like a trading hall on the second floor of the inn um, up in this area, maybe a trading hall or something like that, or maybe this section of the building is actually like a general store connected to the inn and the main like living area is on the upper area. I really don't know. I just wanted to have a connection here. Um, so this is going to be a nice wide connecting tunnel that goes between this house and the inn right here. And this is going to go on down here and the road is going to kind of just open up to right in this little canyon area type of place. This is all going to be cliffs here. Um, and what's going to happen is it's going to be a big blacksmith forge right here. And I think that's going to look very, very cool. Go away, zombie. Go away. No one likes you. Um, and so we're going to have the, a big blacksmith forge here. Not going to build that today because I want to come up with a cool design. But as you can see, I've been doing some work. So let's go take a look at that real quick right after we sleep. So if we run up this way, what we will have is our little cave walkway here. And then this opens up to this section here. And so what I've decided to do is we'll have the path continue up this way to get to the observatory and the sort of the upper workings of the portal area. But I wanted to have a small area here to do some form of build. I don't know what should go up here. Maybe some form of smaller houses, house type of thing where maybe smaller base. Because like, honestly, this is not huge. I could probably figure out a long version of that, of this type of house to fit right here, fit a couple of them. Um, I do think I'm going to extend this area here out to fit like right down along this cliff and make this a much steeper uh, basically bring this whole weird shape up to this level uh, so then we can actually have sort of a section of housing up here as well as you can see it kind of extends a good ways and i think it would look good and it would make these cliffs look a little bit more natural uh, well the soon to be cliffs um, i think it'll make it look a little more natural and we'll add a little bit more depth to our city here um, because we're going to have the pathway go this way. Now I'm going to probably alter this and make it not flat. I'm going to make it kind of do a little bit of rolling, but then I want to either have it dip down and follow and go through this sort of er this area here, maybe have a little house or something up there, a flying house or something like that, where there's like a bridge that connects a pathway goes up here. A bridge can connect to go across to here with a ladder going up to a flying house. That could be kind of cool. Not really sure. I want to try and keep the natural landscape as, as close to what it was as possible, or if anything, amplify it to match what we are going for here. But here's a good look at the shape of the inn here. 
So it's kind of like a little bit of a crescent shape. It's almost like a, a croissant, if you will. Now the bee farm is going to be moving. I just haven't moved it yet. Didn't feel like moving it. Um, and I, I don't know, I'm gonna figure out some place to put it. Maybe we'll put it back there or make some sort of apiarist. I think that could be good. I just don't know where to put it because right now I don't think they would live up in this area. I think if we explore down over there, um, then it, it'd be much better. Now, some of you may be wondering why my render distance is so low. And I've been just because I'm playing sometimes on the Steam Link downstairs, um, it just helps my frames. So I just have my render distance at like eight and it doesn't really bug me. It doesn't like affect my building and I can still see good ways. And uh, it's mainly the oceans. I found the oceans really kill my computer. Don't really know why. Haven't really found the reason as to why. Um, but hopefully when Optifine fully releases, I mean, they've been he's been updating it uh, like every day by 0.1% or something like that. But it is a free thing, so I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, hopefully when that actually releases fully, that'll have fixed this loading in error error uh, issue that I have uh, but up until but until now I guess I'm not gonna mess with it it's not that big of a deal I don't need Optifine to make this game feel awesome because I have a fun texture pack speaking of texture pack I have a couple changes I want to show you in our texture pack world so let's hop on over there to take a look see at some new textures that I am working on and then we'll get into a time lapse of building up these builds here now probably as I said not going to get into all of it but I think I am going to try and get into a good chunk of the in and try and get this full build done if not get at least the full facade done um, and I think that'll give you a good picture as to what we're going to be making so let's jump in look at a few new textures for the upcoming uh, sort of soon color update and then uh, we'll 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 jump into a time lapse so see you in the other world all right we are here in our texture pack world and uh, there is not much going on right now as you can probably see but there are some changes here not a ton but there are some that are very minor that I think are actually really good so this is all the different coloration type of blocks that we are dealing with and I've been doing some changes so first off concrete I have made into the a basically they're just highly saturated terracotta colors um, they are pretty much the exact same color of concrete that they were before just with the stone or terracotta i forget i think terracotta has stones texture um, so whichever one it is it has that texturation going on so it, it looks more like a colorful stone or stucco or something and it's not too textured i didn't want to go overboard on the concrete and make it some crazy thing but i did want to add a little bit of texture that you could help it could help like blend into things a little bit more um, but while maintaining that super bright feeling so that city of color that we talked about long long ago is something that could utilize this and look like it's firmly built if that makes sense now the glass is a work in progress as you can see red glass nothing changed there orange hasn't changed quite yet uh yellow i don't think i changed it but green this is where some new stuff comes in Gr lime green now has this uh this sort of pillar version and it's kind of got a gradient going up i think it looks pretty good same with the dark green i wanted to be able to make these sort of synonymous because i like doing this to windows to make it look almost or actually i think it was actually this because it makes it look like the lights coming out of here and that the house if there's like a shadow it's making a shadow over the top portion of the window just a little build trick if you want some tips on that uh, just copy the yellow version of this and made it into a cyan texture i think that looks very very nice i do enjoy that light blue has not changed though i think i am going to alter this texture a bit to just make it a little bit more 
I don't know, a little bit more usable. I, I do like this texture. I think I need to just clean up some of the dirtiness on it. I think I don't like this anymore. I like how smooth this outer portion is here. So I'm gonna get rid of some of this texturation and make it a little bit more cohesive with these. Um, and then purple also has, the, or this is magenta. Magenta has this same texture and then nothing else has changed in terms of the glass. Some very cool changes going on are on the glazed terracottas. Look at this texture. I love it. It's like an in, a super interesting tile. Now, the cool thing is there are four different textures for this based on direction. And so you've got this way, and then subtle difference is this, which you can tell the difference because, I mean, this one has blue and light blue, and this one has light blue and blue or well blue and blue and then if you face the other way it is also different and then this way is also different so you can get some crazy variation going on and no no like pattern even when you just stack them it doesn't look like super super repeated because it's a bunch of small squares you do get some patterning but if you just mix in some stuff here and there i don't think it, it kind of really throws it off and makes it like mixed in and, and not feel so repeated so that is the what is that cyan yeah, cyan glazed terracotta, it, that is the new texture for that. The brown glazed terracotta is interesting. So here are all four textures for that. I am trying to maintain the same color palette that the originals have while making them more usable and more in line with how we build. And so what I've done is gone for more of a, almost a purple style and then kind of added an ornamental portion here, ornamental diamond here. And then the original is mainly a brown with blue. It's actually more blue than brown. And I didn't like that because it didn't make sense for having a brown palette. So I added the blue back in as a decoration piece here. And so you have to be, let's see, which way do you have to be facing? I think you have to be facing maybe this way. Yeah, you have to be facing this way to get that. If not, you get either that or you get the four, or you get the big block here. I actually love this. I may change some of our polished stones to more like this. I think this is a really, really nice polished stone. I think I did a good job on this. And then finally, the white terracotta, or white glazed terracotta is actually, you'll probably recognize this texture. This is the lodestone. I just did some color changes and made it more of a decorational lodestone block that could be used in sort of a pillar or palace type of feel. So you, it is rotational, but it is pretty much reflected across each side. There are some minor changes, but really doesn't matter with the rotation on this. You can use it as a border of some sort if you want, or you can use it as a pillar capper or something, or just a decorational sort of centerpiece thing. I don't know. It's not supposed to be used a ton. And I don't think any of these are really supposed to be used a ton. I'm not going for something that is supposed to be used all over the place. Like even this very busy, probably wouldn't want to use it all over the place. I would love mixing it in, but even you can see here, this is what the glazed terracotta can do when it is more brown and can be like mapped together. Even this, this doesn't stick out too much because it's just a light accent of blue. So I thought this was very, very nice. And then this is also brown concrete. Now actually looks just like a more saturated, lighter version of brown, brown wool or brown terracotta, which I think is very nice. And so in terms of progress for the color update, I know I am behind, so I'm gonna be working on this as much as I can uh, here in the next couple of weeks. Um, I am, I, I've just, with the, the new puppy and stuff, things kinda got away from me. And so I'm not gonna be able to obviously get this by April because it is um, June. And uh, so sorry about that. I'm going to have to postpone this a bit, but I am going to be working on this in the next couple of weeks to try and get this out, at least get the terracottas, all the terracottas out. And then intermittently, I may try and be throwing in bed textures. Um, and these, I really don't want to change a ton because obviously we just built with them. Uh, so I don't want to change them a ton. I think what I am going to be doing is changing up 
just a few of them. This one I may go back and alter this texture to be a little bit smoother, a little bit less vibrant, I think. I do love the coffin look. I don't know if it's totally necessary because we have our trap chest coffin. I think this works perfectly fine. This texture is gonna have to be altered as well. Don't know what I'm gonna do with this. This one I may just leave and try and not do anything with it to see if Mojang can fix it. I know that is a bug thanks to one of you that had told me and let me sent me a link to a bug in the bug tracker. So hopefully that is fixed along with the uh, transparencies on the paintings. That would be lovely. If not, we will figure out a new thing. The yellow bed I am, how, okay, let me know. Do you like this yellow bed? If so, we'll keep it. If not, I'll scratch it, I'll get rid of it. And I'll make this texture the yellow bed texture, or I'll just make it a yellow bed like this. I don't really care, doesn't matter to me. You just let me know. But let's go ahead and get on into a time lapse for us to do some building, because that's why you guys are here. All right, guys, so we are back, did a good amount of building, did a good amount off camera as well. Hopefully you enjoyed the time lapse. Um, and I do want to say real quickly, sorry this video is late. I know the past couple weeks have been uh, slow on videos and just want to say sorry about that. It's just been a little difficult to record with the puppy and trying to figure out times that I can go upstairs to record and like him not be a nuisance to Emma uh, because he has a habit of for some reason. So she studies in the kitchen normally um, and we have a, a set of bells that hang off of the doorknob for the kitchen that he rings when he wants to go outside. And that's great. He's using them and it's wonderful. Issue is uh, when I go upstairs and she's in the kitchen, for some reason he cannot contain himself and he just rings those bells to no end. So 
Uh, it's been a little interesting having to figure that out and work around it, and I just don't want to drive her insane with his constant ringing. Um, but any let's look at what I've done. So here you can see what we've created so far. Um, so what this is going to be, this is just a regular old house. And the idea I think that I'm going to have is the bottom is going to be a blacksmith's uh, sort of house air or shop area. And so the bottom is going to be a blacksmith shop. It's pretty roomy. You've got a good amount of space in the bottom. So I think that'll be good for selling uh, things for the blacksmith, which is going to have the forge down in this area. And do we have any? Oh, cool. I can actually finish that. Very good. Um, so the forge is going to be back here, kind of tucked away in this uh, sort of inner cliff area. And I think that's going to be nice that, of course, it's going to be cliffs, as we said before. Um, of course, it is sun setting. So let me go ahead and sleep and then we'll continue talking. Anyway, this is going to be the blacksmith's house. So the store is going to be down there, living area. If you hear barking, I'm sorry, Mavericks is being a nuisance because I'm upstairs. Um, and so, yeah, that's what we've been dealing with. So hopefully that'll go away when he gets a little bit older. But for now, it's just puppy behavior. But upstairs is going to be his main there, I guess, his him and his family, his or her family, whatever, I don't know. Um, this is going to be where they live. And then upstairs, of course, of course, is going to be where more living situations. And it's a pretty big house. All of these houses are going to be pretty large. Um, and I'm okay with that. I love how they are turning out. So this one is a little bit uh, interesting because it actually is going to have a side that we have to make. And so I've kind of gone through and made the foundation for the sides. Uh, on the bottom area, I don't know what the top is going to look like. I, I think the sides are all going to be pretty much flat. Uh, this this line is not going to be, this portion is not going to stick out nearly as much on this side. It may just stick out by one block just to give it a little bit of extra shape. But other than that, I don't want it hanging over a ton on the sides. Um, but the front, I mean, it hangs over quite a bit. It goes out one, two, three, four, five, six goes out by six and the roof goes out by another two. So, I mean, it's it's going out there pretty far. And I'm trying to build more on diagonals and really trying to make that uh, just feel incorporated into the build. And I think like that looks pretty natural. I think it looks overall pretty natural. Um, originally, my design for this where you see the terracotta. So there's terracotta right there. And this is the yellow concrete. Um, the terracotta was supposed to be bee nests. And then I figured that's probably not a great use of bee nests since we don't have that many. Um, so I went ahead and switched that out for, uh, I may have been concrete. I switched out for, but I think it looks good overall. Sandstone up there is a very nice combination. Now comes the gigantic build that you see partway built. So this is what let's actually get rid of the scaffolding here. And so this is going to be the Crescent Moon Inn, as I think I had said before. It's been actually quite a while since I've recorded. I think it's been almost a week. Um, I've been building, just haven't been recording. But this is going to be the Crescent Moon Inn, and I actually love the color palette that we've kind of gone with here. Um, and so we've got mushroom blocks, which have the inner texture. Uh, when you place mushroom blocks against one another, this is the texture that appears mixed with smooth sandstone. I think that looks really nice. That is our brown concrete and then wool looks very nice as well. And then that is regular mushroom block. Um, and then there's going to be, of course, plants and stuff up in this area here. Uh, there's going to be a little plant here on these smaller planters. And then up there is a mixture of white concrete white concrete powder, wool, and the occasional snow block. And I think that looks so nice. Just having the three paired up. Oh, I think it looks so good. Um, let's get back here if we can. And so now you kind of get a good perspective as to what it's going to look like. So this is all one building, but we have not fully built up this side. I've been working on it here and there throughout the week as I've had time. And it is looking good so far. I really do like it. The main thing that I am struggling with that I don't really know what I'm going to do. I've got the bottom kind of figured out, 
but I don't really know what to do with this center portion. So I've tried to line it up. I think it lines up nicely. You've got the market entrance on this side here, and then you'll have the outer portion right here for the Crescent Moon Inn. I'm thinking maybe there are just some seat, there's just some like seating and stuff out here on the sides and you can enter the main Crescent Moon Inn area. Um, I think, I'm thinking maybe making it both an inn and a tavern. I think those go well together. Um, and so the sides stick out just a little bit. They aren't going to be too decorative. They're going to be pretty flat and uh, maybe a couple windows, but not too much of anything going on. The bottom is very uh, trap door heavy, as you can see. I absolutely love the more and more I use this trap door, the more and more I love the texture. Um, and so then you're going to come in here and then we're going to have to figure out what it's like. But this is why it's called the Crescent Moon Inn. I mean, it is a sort of a crescent shape. Of course, that kind of makes it a little more unique flavored anyways. Um, and this will all have to move. But for now, I don't really care. Um, but I think it's going to be good. So I'm thinking the sides of the bottom, this entire bottom area is going to be all straight tavern. And then the second story is going to be all sort of living in so living situations. So what I the reason this is such a big build is this is going to be a big trading area i'm thinking for the steampunk city like the city itself is going to be a big trading thing but they since this is going to be such a big port with the nether portal that you see in the distance i'm thinking this is going to get a lot of traffic and so they need a good amount of space to kind of accommodate people oh and right here is going to be a bridge i think i've talked about uh, i talked about recently and uh, so there's going to be a bridge connecting them just it didn't have the time to make it um, and yeah, I don't know. I honestly, I don't know how else to, to talk to you about this because it's been kind of a, a long time since I recorded the last clip. Um, and this is honestly how it's going to have to be, I think, for at least another, it's probably going to be another month of, of getting Mavericks trained a little bit more so that he's a little less crazy and figuring out how to best get all of his energy out. But I hope you have liked what we've made. I wanted to focus on this for the time lapse, and then this is pretty much repeat, so I didn't want to deal with that. Uh, I think maybe next episode we'll focus on maybe getting this center portion figured out a bit, um, and then maybe working on the forge area itself. I'm not really sure. Don't really have any plans. Um, oh, these guys. Look how many of them there are. Oh, it's awful. It's so bad. There are so many. I've killed like, as you saw at the beginning, killed like seven raiders or seven raids already. Um, oh, that must mean. No, nope, it's not full. Did that? Did that stop? Is our thing stopped? Oh, I found berry bushes too over there. That's nice. But anyways, guys, I think that's gonna have to do it for this episode. I am terribly sorry for the delay in it, and I'm terribly sorry for not being able to get nearly as much done as I was hoping. Though I am happy with the progress i think this is a really good step in the right direction keeping with similar style to this but going more row housey as we get into the main city area and i i don't know I, i'm really loving this style i think it's really cool if you have any builds that you think we should add i know i've had a few suggestions for like a uh, flying ship sort of factory area i'm thinking that will go over in that area uh near the sea so it can kind of be just launched into the water in case of like failure to fly um and so i think that's going to be a really cool build as well have to figure it out a little bit more but so i've been focusing up here but hopefully you have enjoyed and enjoy these builds get some inspiration if you do leave a like in real life and if you like the video even though it was late and it's a little bit sporadic and i just don't have any idea how to outro this uh then yeah i don't know consider subscribing if you're not and uh thanks for watching and i uh, hope you have a great day and i'll see you in the next episode Oh, bye-bye.